Hey guys, um, so recently I've gotten into, let's call it venture capitalism, uh, and uh, that's been kind of fun, uh, mostly because of this game I've been playing called Payday the Heist, it's on uh, the PC and also the PlayStation 3. came out a couple of months ago and I think it's probably one of my favorite games to come out that nobody has really been playing. So anyways, Payday the Heist, it's 20 bucks, but is it any good? Should you go out and get this game? Well, here's my opinion of Payday the Heist. Payday the Heist seems like one of those games that's a perfect idea for a video game, but inexplicably, not many people picked it up. There are a couple of video games that dabbled in the bank heist genre, GTA 4 and Kane and Lynch the original, not the horrible second one. But as far as I know, there hasn't been any real heist games that are dedicated entirely to robbing banks and all that stuff, like playing out the movie Heat or the opening of The Dark Knight, you know, that kind of genre. Thankfully though, now we have Payday the Heist, which is basically a bank heist simulator. The concept is relatively easy to grasp, you and three of your friends, or three random people, or three AI controlled bots that don't know what the hell they're doing, go off and basically rob something. There are a couple of different heists, but they're all broken down into stages. Like, first you have to get the bank manager so that you can get the key to the vault, then you have to cut your way through, then you have to burn through the vault and drop down, then you have to get all the money, then you have to escape with your lives. And of course, the cops aren't just gonna let you go all willy-nilly stealing everyone's money and then walk it away scot-free. I mean, seriously, have you ever seen a bank heist movie where they just kinda walk in and everything goes as planned and the cops never catch on? As you run around trying to rob people blind, the cops go after you, as you would expect, but not just regular ass cops, not just beat cops, but eventually you'll get SWAT. As the game progresses, you get harder and harder cops thrown at you. And there are also specialized cops that come at you every now and again. If you played Left 4 Dead, these are kind of like the special infected version of cops. There'll be cops with giant riot shields, so you gotta kind of shoot behind them if you can get them. There are cops with tasers that'll like tase you indefinitely until your friends take them out. There's the bulldozer, which is a guy that's super tough to kill, and you have to like shoot him in the face a bunch of times. And much like Left 4 Dead, these come at different intervals at random times, so every time you play it, it's slightly different than the last time. It's clear that this game takes a lot of its cues from the Left 4 Dead series, which is great, because I love that series. Because this is a $20 game, you'd think they would skimp on the content, but they don't. The game actually comes with, and if my arithmetic is right, six different levels that you get to play through. The first one is obviously just First World Bank, which is, you know, robbing a bank and all the stuff you would expect from a bank robbery. But strangely enough, they didn't rest on their laurels and just remake that and, you know, oh, here's a different bank that you're robbing. Each one of the different maps is actually different. One of them is a diamond heist, which would seem similar, but you're trying to do it all stealthy and it's in a big high-rise office building. One of them is trying to steal some money from a panic room in a meth house. And probably one of the most interesting ones is the one that doesn't involve a heist at all, the Street Heat, which takes place after a successful heist where one of your guys has like betrayed you and you basically have to chase this guy down, catch him, because he's got all your stuff, and then get out of there. The levels do a great job of running the gamut of every kind of typical heist scenario that you would expect. And besides just running around and, you know, killing cops and stealing money, there's actually a leveling system in the game that encourages you to replay. Now why would you want to replay these things and why would there be a leveling system in this game? Well, I'll tell you. As you progress through the game, instead of getting like experience points, you get money points, which you fill your money bar and then you level up. And by leveling up, you get obviously new weapons that are cool, but you also get abilities to help your buddies. You can get yourself things like a medic bag to heal your buddies if they're hurt or extra cable ties so you can get more hostages. And you definitely want hostages in this game because they're a big part of the game. Not only is it just fun to yell, get on the ground, on the ground, you know, and all that stuff, but the hostages are actually an integral part of your strategies. You see, if the unfortunate happens and one of your buddies is shot down and you don't get to him in time and he dies, instead of actually dying, he's just under arrest. If you have a buddy in police custody, you can actually take one of your hostages and trade it so that you can get your friend back, which seems like a horrible strategy for the police, but whatever. For a $20 game, it certainly has a lot of content going for it, but there are some problems. The multiplayer aspects are not quite as, you know, on par with Left 4 Dead. Not quite as easy to drop in, drop out as you would expect, but it's still pretty easy to get into a game. That is, of course, if you can find the game, because the community is not nearly as big as Left 4 Dead. Uh, but hopefully, a lot of people will pick this up, and there'll be a ton of us playing, and it'll get a sequel, and it'll be awesome. And while playing with three guys and, you know, robbing some stuff is so much fun, the playing with bots and the single player, not so much. 
the bots just kind of follow you around and they don't ever do any of the objectives for you. You have to do them all by yourself and just have these guys kind of escort you around. But playing online alleviates that, so whatever. Unfortunately, the AI problems aren't just in the single player because there are a couple of missions where at certain points you have to kind of escort somebody from one area to the other and they can be kind of a pain in the ass to direct. So Payday the Heist, um, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's Left 4 Dead basically, only you're robbing banks. And it's great because you're never robbing the same bank, it doesn't feel all that repetitive. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, it'd be nice if there were some more gameplay modes, but as a $20 game, it's incredible. And I would totally suggest if you have a PlayStation or a computer, you go out and get this game, because it's 20 bucks. get a couple of friends together and play it together, because I don't think you will hate this. I think you will have a blast playing.